to celebrate Earth Day this Friday, we're helping you green your life all this week. And here with a recipe that is both delicious and good for the environment, please welcome Abby Sharp, who's very good for the environment. She herself is. So we're going to talk about, you know, we throw things out like we did at the beginning of the show, what does metabolism mean? Yeah. Now we're going to talk about what does sustainable food mean? So sure. what is the definition? What, uh, what so do you mean by that? Sustainable seafood just means that it's yeah. being caught or farmed in ways that are not going to harm the environment. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's no hard and fast rules when it comes to sustainability. It's kind of complicated stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can just see an organic label and know that's sustainable. Right. So you really do have to ask a lot of questions of your fishmonger before you buy. So you go to the fish counter yeah. and then you ask the following question. Uh, it, what is the name of the fish? Yes, that's thing. important. And that's important and in that because you want to know the, like, sort of the history of the fish and where it's farmed, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So you want the specifics. So, for example, you probably know it's tuna if you're buying tuna. Yeah. But you want to know, is it albacore? Is it big eye? Is it bluefin? Those details are really important because some specific species may be at greater risk of becoming endangered. Okay. But as a general rule of thumb, usually the smaller fish tend to be more sustainable oh. simply because they're, they've got, they're more abundant in the ocean. Right, right. And also they might be healthier too because they've lived shorter lives so they've accumulated fewer toxins like mercury. It, it does matter where it's caught Absolutely. too. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So where, it caught, where it's caught is very important. And again, more detail, the better. Mm -hmm. So sometimes knowing Pacific versus Atlantic versus Mediterranean is enough. But if you can get those real good details, like the Gulf of St. Lawrence, for example, that would be an ideal amount of information to get. How, wait, how, come? how come that's? Uh, well, because it really does, de it de really does determine the, the sustainability of that uh, OK, OK. And then how it's caught is a how big deal. How it's caught. Yeah. So gear type is important. Things like bottom trawls, drift nets, long lines, these are gear that tend to sweep up the bottom of the ocean oh. and just kills off everything in its path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whenever possible, I like to look for fish that have been caught with hooker line and or trap caught, which is a lot more specific and sustainable. So we're going to take a look at a couple things here. How do we know if we're making the right choice? And this is what you're, another lesson from Abby. Uh, so we'll take a look at, there's a there's an app? Yeah, so obviously this is so complicated that you don't need to figure it out yourself. Okay. Once you've got this information, there's a lot of technology. So one of my favorite apps is by Sea Choice, and you just plug in all that great information that you got from your, seam, your your fishmonger and it'll tell you whether or not it's a sustainable choice. So okay. you can see why that level of detail is important because it really does depend on the specific species, where it came from, mm -hmm. how it was caught. And like for example, sometimes wild caught may be sustainable but in other cases it's not it's sustainable. Not, it's not. So yeah, you need that level of detail. And then you have OceanWise app as well. Absolutely. Same, same idea? Same idea. Okay. So right. you can see there's our Arctic char so that was kind of the inspiration for our recipe today. Okay, I love this. Okay, yeah. so you're making maple glazed arctic char, braised cabbage and apple. How's yes. that? Yes. Delicious. Beautiful. Tell me a little bit about arctic char because it's tastier oh, it's to me. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's kind so of flavorful. a mix between like a salmon and yep. a trout. Mm -hmm. um, but this arctic char is farmed in a closed land-based farming system, which is a really sustainable way of okay. uh, fishing. Mm -hmm. um, and I love it because it's actually a fish that's high in omega-3s, but low in those in that mercury. So okay, it's kind of an all-around great yeah. piece, great fish. So we're just going to give these guys a little bit of salt and, uh, salt and pepper. And uh, this truly is one of my favorite fish. Oh, it's so, so, so flavorful. Yeah. And I don't know, it feels fancier than going for salmon, right? You feel like Arctic little char. Arctic char. Yeah. Um, so this goes into the oven for 450 degrees. And we'll just pop that in there. I've got yeah. one ready to oh, go. It's done. But in the meantime, let's work a little bit. I know, magic television. Let's work on our, um, I'll bring this over here, our cabbage. Okay. So really, really super simple. It's, this is a side dish I make in my home like every day. Okay, so again, with the Arctic char, because you don't want to overcook the fish. What, yes. Okay, so you put it in the middle rack, top rack? Uh, probably the middle rack, okay. if you, especially if you have a nice convection oven. You want to get that nice even right. heating. And how long, again? It usually will take about 10 to 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes. depending on the thickness. And, the, and again, the temperature is? 450. 450. Nice and high heat. Okay. Get it, get it done quick, okay. right? So now cabbage. How about cabbage. that? Yeah, yeah. So let's just turn this down just a touch. So touch a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan there. Okay. Just going to get this cabbage down. And I like the purple cabbage because it's colorful. It just looks nice. But you can totally use whatever you have. Cabbage is such an expensive vegetable. We talked I, about that right? not too long we ago. It goes a that. long way, doesn't it? Oh, so a little bit of apple as well because I like the bit of okay. the sweetness with this. And some water just to get the steam kind of steam going. Okay. And then, ooh, we always get a party going you on. You are going to stink up this I building. know, I know, I'm sorry. I looked at the rundown today, I said she's making fish and cabbage. I know, well, it's going to be a smell. I'll tell you. 
BNN is not going to be happy with us because they're just down the hallway. But it's okay. Right? It's fine. Yeah. Okay. So we got some low sodium soy sauce. This is just going to give a little bit of that salty kick and some maple syrup. Mm -hmm. So I like the sweet salty combo going on. Oh, I like that too. Yeah. And then I think it smells really good already. And then we're going to put the lid on. Just let this steam. It takes pretty much as long as the fish. So everything's going to happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then we make a really quick glaze, which just basically has a lot of the same kind of yeah, ingredients. Tell me about this. This is interesting. Yeah, so yeah. we've got some maple syrup, uh -huh. some of that low sodium soy sauce. Right. I grated some ginger, fresh, zippy, delicious ginger, and a bit, bit of cornstarch just to thicken it up. And the reason I don't put this right on the fish when I cook it is that it would burn. And then I'd have to clean up a baking sheet with all that sugar burnt on and Nobody's, Nobody's got time, time, for, got that. time for that. Nobody's got time. Yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah. all we're going to do is take a little brush, 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 on our beautiful pieces so of Arctic nice. charm. Nice, yeah. Do it after the fact, of course, so that you don't get that, uh, you don't have all that sticking. Mm -hmm. And then our cabbage is all ready to go. Look oh, how good that looks. Oh, look at that. And I just finished off with a little bit of almonds and some of those green onions, and it's a perfect yeah. low-carb, high-protein dinner. Okay, now I've got a question for you. Yeah. Go to the fish counter. Yep. How, how do you know how much fish to get well, for your family? Like you for know, sure. Because I know that my my cameraman would eat the whole fish. I right, it happens. Um, so yeah. generally, I would say um, anywhere usually about four ounce portion is enough for, for okay. per person. Okay. So yeah, you're looking for a family of four. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at about sixteen ounces. And how long when you buy the fish fresh? Yeah, fresh. How long? Uh, you store it in your refrigerator until you're ready. Mm -hmm. How long is it good until? Like a day? Uh, usually, Don't I try to eat day? it as quickly as possible. Okay, very you good. You want it to be fresh. You want, you know, you want that quality. Exactly. Abby Sharp, thank you. You can find this delicious recipe on Maryland.ca. We're going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.